Um, KEPT is Community Action Platform on Environment and Development. It is a community organization that was registered in 2009. Um, the rationale or the idea behind KEPT is uh, as a result of the environmental degradation that is taking place around this area. We saw things that needed um, quick intervention in our community. Like previous speakers have talked about the salt intrusion into rice fields that have rendered most of the arable lands, once arable lands, almost infertile and not arable for agricultural purposes. Mankol, me yalon ko yu badala. Mankol fatale, ko jiyo le yo fa. Nduo ko jiyo, vira yin mankol fa. Anata batean dero ke, musol la, ila farabulo la. Dikos jiyo sel tanane, for musol la parolto, je abe damen to bi, ibu ka mano do kuno je ay baraka. Obviously, environment is very key in any development. So, you know, immediately when Modu came with this idea of restoring the man mangrove and looking at the importance of mangroves to our society, we didn't waste time. We came together and supported him. And each time he comes here, he always ha do have the support of the whole community. We come out to go in large numbers and do this planting exercise. Sintet musole, ini seno hamolam dorong. Ini sama aku cuk, katara ring, katara hamer ini sama aku kuala. Bari, nafarumu, omisalfi, mangkola dasu, farulu kukmu, farulu kukmu kiri di pasang di bakar. Kabinet bedin dia la, kabinet mama jamano akan imbal dem, mama bota jam fama nara wafana disenti. Obat aja saya hendak faham lebih je. Bodi ni bah time sudah ni bah ni mana lagi. Mangkul bija watu me. Hari ni koyo kujalol luar ma bah kata mulek. So we saw that it is really paying dividends. Um, we have restored at least 30 hectares of land that was um, lost to salt intrusion. And the women have now started recultivating those areas because during high tides, um, salt water spills over into the rice fields. We all know that our women do their planting around the swampy areas, around the rivers. So that is where they have their rice fields, commonly known as our furrows. <laughs> Panang kata raji kering ini lah, na hamo kado sama aku nang adu kuake, puru ni senin nadi mbali tambin dia sono yandi, bawang kamano le doku, mana juno sa doku, ni ngaduku, kar sabam mano ni aduku, ni ni mau putata kaira kono, kar sabu, ubek kumfala dao dao, ikat bara mano domole, ini lah di mbali so domole, na siada, bawang beja mano minto say, dulu kar doku ke dulu bekaake, ni temari mana jaman soto nu. Like the mangroves have a lot of components, a lot of benefits come along with the mangrove project. Not only restoring the damaged ecosystem, not only contributing our quotas toward fighting climate change, but also, um, like we said, rice is our stable food. So if we are able to reclaim vast areas of land or vast hectares of land that we are that we are lost to salt intrusion, that is an order plus to us. This will in turn increase agricultural productivity, and then people will become at least food self-sufficient, even if they are not able to get enough to sell, but they will have enough to consume. Because B, into la balu bebe seno le bala, surtu musol ni atra B koe into la farol beta, umu sate ola mantoro leti, anata juu ni project kola kuoto. Alah nak tak berakat kiri, ay projek ko sama dengan saat itu mula, saat itu funding kita ulfana lota fe, kaje ko, aske kuti mealong ko, nafa kulem mealong ko abis saat itu, aman ke akmoti, baris saat itu la nafa, mak ke akfang la kumalad, baris saat itu la nafa abe wale norma, wala tu nanyi projek ko sama dengan. Well, um, our focus and our main goal is to plant at least 10 million mangrove saplings along the river bank and create at least seven kilometers of mangrove forest along the river bank. You know, I work in tourism and uh, believe me, there are people that travel long to come to Gambia and just to see one single bird. 
So it's very important. Mangroves are very important. Like river birds, like fish eagles, like palm nut vultures, like um, kingfishers and so on. Find them in the mangroves. So the main objective um, is to restore the damaged ecosystem. Um, our ecosystem is already damaged, That's, that is one. And we also want to contribute our quota towards fighting climate change, uh, which is also that. So mangroves um, absorb a lot of carbon. So we emit a lot of carbon as humans, not only from us, but also from the things that we use, either our industries, our machines, and a lot of other things. So we need trees to absorb that carbon. And we need the trees to give us the, the, the oxygen that we need. So it's, it's um, a symbiotic kind of relationship where you give and take. Mangrove is a win-win situation. It's got lots of benefits. You can, you can have um, firewood from it. Mang the oysters cling onto the roofs of the mangroves. And uh, you know, women go out in dog out canoes to fish these oysters for food. And the oysters themselves, very rich in calcium, and can be crossed to make um, chicken food. It's very good for the shells of the chicken. But also, it could be crossed into lime to, use, to be used for painting, whitewashing the houses. And in the olden days, it used to plaster the house. They mix it with mud and a bit of cement to plaster the houses. But again, in the olden days, they'll mix it with cockle shells to build our roads. So obviously, and this all comes from the, the mangroves. What, we are, what is in the pipeline is to build an ecotourism centre in the mangroves. And that's another importance of the mangroves. So that is in the pipeline. So once that's done, then obviously that will attract a lot of tourists, but also employment to the community. Presently, what we have to offer to the tourists is the, the, the wildlife, the birds and the wildlife. That's what we have to offer. When we started this in 2009, we really did a lot of advocacy, a lot of sensitization campaigns were done in the intervention communities. Sintet particularly, we've had a series of meetings with the community people where our elders would talk about how our ecosystem used to look like, look like before the mangroves died, died down of the mangroves. So these young children, including myself, have had that opportunity. I mean, I'm not a child, but I'm a youth who didn't witness the diverse nature of our, our, our ecosystem how it used to look like before. Because when I was born, when I grew up, I grew up to see all the empty lands. There were no mangroves. So uh, that is something that Capet did a lot. We did a lot of advocacy to make sure that the young children, like you saw, a lot of children that came, some of them are primary school children. And we've allocated a special land that every year that is dedicated to them because they, they did it and they saw that it is paying dividend. Because every time you do it, the next year you go back there, you are going to see it. So the mangroves is really very inspiring. I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves. I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves. I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves. I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves. I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves. Because of the hospital, I was able to get the mangroves to the mangroves to the mangroves. Manko na be birere, ha? Jise o se soto, ni o se sota akon, pur maafu. Eba jela mbe minke la maafu di, fo sa akin o business o fanantle, sa te o la yirua kiso kawulindi. Initially, watu mo ni mbada la ni be banta jang ibuka jeje, watu mo manko be betari ibuka dula jeje. Mangkolia be dibindi. Jiobu a kujiobu ka access soto no kana kasele farolto puka farolti nyia. Bar biring ni mangkol fata tiniaro nata kujie farol beta. So you have seen that the mangrove restoration project was able to bring together the women that are feeling the effects of climate change. So these women are able to come along under one umbrella. Also the fishermen, like we've got a lot, lot of people who, who abandoned the fishing trade. A lot of people who abandoned the fishing trade as a result of the lack of mangroves because they need to sell upstream. They have to sell upstream to be able to come up with a good catch because of the lack of mangroves. But since the mangroves came back 
and we've had fishermen that they only have to go for a few hours or minutes to come home with a good catch. So this will in turn inspire a lot of other fishermen who are runaway fishermen, who abandon the fishing trade to come back. It will inspire them to come back and start thinking of going back to the fishing industry. And that alone is entrepreneurship because they will have to get something to feed for home consumption. But most of 70 or 80 percent of the fishes that they catch from the river, they are selling it for commercial purposes, uh, which will in turn help them um, pay for the school fees of their children, help support their families in different ways. Because Nino Siata, Sabla no business or Connell, so Bade Malali, you know, and a Kunu sang, Nadi Bade Malali, Kanyo Dima, Sata Wola Yuaka Foy, Nino de Mata, Nindo Wafita Dadima, Nindo Sati Juli, Nintang Cotton. C'est ce que um, these are the type of people that we use when we are doing our advocacy because he's somebody who comes from a, from a fishing background. He has his ancestors from his grandparents to his parents to himself. So this was something that was inherited and it was passed down to lineage through a lineage system. And that guy, like he said, when the fishing industry was, was, was dying down, or he had no option. He was left with no option than to pick up the truel. What we mean by pick up the trail was to go and learn an other trade. In this case, was the was as a messina, and he started learning the, the, that trade as a messina. So that just so that I mean he wouldn't sit down and, and have nothing to put on the table. So he's just telling us that recently also he have just placed the uh, the, 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 the the trail that is uh, he's thinking of doing away with being a messina and going back to a trade that he inherited, something that he loves doing, something that he knows from childhood. So that is something, these are the type of people that we took during our, 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 our advocacy campaigns, during our sensitization campaigns, and they will talk to the communities, talk to the young people about the importance of the mangroves. Well, um, the biggest challenge we have so far is um, getting partners and getting uh, uh, people to fund our initiatives. Um, since inception, we have had three organizations that uh, we are partnering with. We had Hino International, that is an international organization that is run by Professor Karamosonko, who is also the executive chairman of TAF Global. Um, he runs Hino International and he funded a project, the Mangrove Restoration Project in 2001. So having access to funding is one of our biggest challenges that we face. Um, recently, since 2015, um, since I was a Mandela Washington Fellow, um, the U.S. Embassy, through its Alumni Engagement Fund, started funding this project since 2015. And since then, every year, they give us grant through the Alumni Engagement Funds, of which I, I, I can access as, as an alumni of the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So great thanks goes to U.S. Embassy that funded 60% of the Mangrove Restoration Project. Because like I said, since, since 2015, 16, 17, and 18, and this year, 2019, all these um, restorations were funded by them and supported by them. So having access to funds is one of our biggest challenges because besides the U.S. Embassy, since 2015, it's only here international. International. <laughs> Well, what we need to reach our goal of um, or our target of planting 10 million mangroves is getting volunteers and getting the partnerships, partners and also getting the will from the communities. Because it's not only us going outside and meeting communities and saying this is what we are doing. It, it has to come from the communities. You need to see the readiness in them. You need to see that they are prepared to take ownership of the projects. Like if kept do intervention in any community, kept may not be presently there 
or physically there to make sure that the project is sustained. So giving ownership to the communities and the communities being ready to take ownership of the projects is one thing. Also, another thing is, uh, besides the sustainability aspect of it, like I said, I will still need to reiterate about funding because without funds, I mean, we cannot do this. CAPT is not a profitable organization. So, uh, the, uh, one of the speakers said here, yeah, it is purely voluntary. So whatever we do, we are doing it for the common good and we are doing it for the future generation. So this is not profit making. The little funds that we have, we invest in them on, 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 on the restorations and on our projects. So having partners is something that I will really need to reiterate. Before 2009, production declined because of the in, intrusion, salt intrusion into the fields. But after 2009, production increased by about 10, 15 percent. So that's a significant improvement. Yes. So I am very hopeful because 90% of the people that confide today and that have always been doing this project are the youth and the children. So the most re refreshing and reassuring aspect of it is having these children come physically and first hand seeing what is happening. Like I said, this planting this sense of ownership to the communities is going to help us. So they will not see it as a carpet project, okay, carpet came here, they did this, they are gone. But they will also see it like it is them. It, it's in their river, it's in their communities, it's affecting them, affecting our parents, affecting everyone. So that sense of ownership is already planted among the little children and these are the future leaders.